Sister girls, do you remember our limited audio series, Campfire Tales? Well, it's winter and we're back for another round. Winter Tales is our limited audio winter series. We've rounded up some talented black authors and writers to share their work for your listening pleasure. Some of these tales were written specifically for this series and others are snippets of work that is already published. So relax, get something warm to drink and enjoy. The Night Before Christmas, A Potomac Falls Short by K.L. Hall. Chapter 1, Fighting Around the Christmas Tree. Christmas Eve, Quinn Q. Mosley. Shattered red glass ornaments, mangled green garland, two black and blue eyes. It wouldn't be Christmas without a fight. I kept Bree's hair wound tightly around my fist. How could you do this shit to me, bitch? I yelled before sending another devastating blow to her once-perfect caramel-colored button nose. I'm sorry. You weren't supposed to find out this way, she squealed while trying to free herself from the death grip I had on her. Wrong fucking answer, I screamed, socking her ass one more time. That's enough. Let go of her right now, Quinn, my father roared as he gripped my shoulders from behind. Fueled by rage and three glasses of spiked eggnog, I felt like the She-Hulk, ready to take on whoever. He didn't know my pain. He had no idea the betrayal she'd inflicted on me. I wanted to beat that bitch so bad she'd still be black and blue by the new year. His voice boomed again. I said that's enough. Let her go. Let your sister go. My chest heaved in and out as I shoved him to the side, reaching across the air for her. She ain't no fucking sister of mine. I let go and kicked her before he pulled me from the living room into the kitchen. What the hell has gotten into you, Q? He quizzed, brow creased with concern. I shook my head as warm tears of rage slid down my cheeks. You don't know what she did, Daddy. You don't know what she did to me, I yelled. It doesn't matter what she did to you. She's your family. She's your sister. That's loyalty. You want to talk to me about loyalty? Huh? You talking to the wrong fucking one. Go ask that bitch about loyalty. I screamed, ready to sound the bell for round two. Calm down or you're going to have to get out, he warned. I shot my vengeful eyes into his. What? You're putting me out on Christmas, daddy? You're taking her side? I'm not taking anyone's side, but you're the one in here acting like a maniac. Look around you, Q. You're scaring your niece and nephew, he scolded me. I sighed before dipping my chin to stare at the fuzzy Christmas socks on my feet before slowly looking around. We were far from a couple of children roughhousing and knocking shit over. The seven-foot fir tree was sprawled across the ground. The blinking strings of white lights were twisted and broken red and green ornaments were all over the place. The stockings for my dad, twin brother Quincy, niece, nephew, stepmother, and Bree that once hung from the mantle over the fireplace were scattered and hanging loosely. I'm sorry for scaring them and for the mess. I'll clean it up. He threw his hands up in disgust, preparing to walk away from me. You damn right you will. You should be ashamed of yourself. I shook my head. Remorse was the furthest thing from my mind. I'm not sorry for what I did, Daddy. And you say you aren't taking a side, but all you've done is criticize me for what I did to her. And you haven't once asked what she did to me. His nostrils flared, pushing out an exasperated sigh. What did she do to you, Q? I clamped down on my lips and drew a deep breath before revealing the truth. She's been fucking Jackson behind my back, Daddy. I watched his thick, graying eyebrows rise with concern. She what? Oh, shit, my twin brother Quincy mumbled while standing next to the oven. The kitchen fell silent as my father and I watched him pull out a sheet of gooey chocolate chip cookies he'd baked with his kids for Santa. Yo, I'm sorry, Quinn. Quincy spoke up when it seemed our father was at a complete loss. I dipped my chin in a nod. Yeah, me too. I was in a mood so dark that no one could change it. The pantry door squeaked as Quincy made his way inside, then stepped out, gripping the smooth broom handle, preparing to clean up our mess. Go ahead and get out of here and clear your head. Don't worry about the mess. I got you, he assured me. Thanks, my voice shook. 
Quinty and I both knew if I laid eyes on Bree's ass again, I'd be committing murder. My chair scraped across the hardwood floor before I walked to the door to grab my coat and grab my boots. Outside, the crisp bite in the winter air quickly began to sober me up. I sat in the driver's seat and lit a blunt while the car warmed up for a few minutes. I put the blunt to my lips and sparked the flame, inhaling slowly. My nerves were jumping around my body like frogs on lily pads, and I needed something to calm me down and send my mind somewhere else. Once the smoke filled my lungs, I could feel a calming numbness in my mind and body, allowing me to relax. I closed my eyes and instantly started reflecting on the last explosive 30 minutes of my night. Bree, Quincy, and the kids were in the kitchen decorating Christmas cookies with her mom while I was snuggled up on the couch watching a Charlie Brown Christmas on the big screen TV. During the commercial break, I heard the muffled vibration from Bree's iPhone against the coffee table. Being the nosy person I was, I swiped it up and flipped it over. To my surprise, I saw my boyfriend Jackson's name across the screen. Instantly, my heart began to race. I quickly made my way down the hall and pushed through the narrow doorway of the hallway powder room. As soon as I locked the door, I sat on the toilet seat and started trying to crack her login code in the least number of attempts before locking myself out of her phone completely. As soon as it unlocked, it vibrated consistently like a washing machine. Although I wasn't ready to face the truth, I had to find out what the hell my man and my sister were talking about. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath before navigating to her messages to read their text thread. The first few messages I saw weren't words, but video clips from his phone to hers. I drew in a deep breath and held it while I pressed play. The moment I saw Jackson fucking her doggy style in his bed while she moaned, I dropped the phone to the ground and cut my hand over my mouth as I screamed. My heart was beating so fast that I felt like I was going to pass out. My eyes stung with tears as I reached down to pick up the phone. My palms began to get clammy as I held it in my shaky hands. Following the videos was a string of text. My eyes shifted from left to right while I sat perched on the toilet seat in complete shock. I smeared my tears and mascara against the back of my hand as I read the words that made my heart stop. Jackson, forgot I had these in my phone. Bree. Mm, good times. Jackson, when you gonna let daddy inside again? You know I can't go too long without my fix. Bree, kitty got you hooked, huh? Jackson, it's the best I've ever had, no cap. Couldn't quit you if I tried. I sat there rereading the messages repeatedly as the pain marinated inside my chest. I never knew what it felt like to die until that very moment. I didn't know what tore me apart more, reading about how my man thought my stepsister had better pussy than me, or the actual visual proof of their betrayal and infidelity. There I was, thinking things in my relationship were solid, while he was making plans to fuck my stepsister again. By the looks of it, they'd been fucking around for a while and were comfortable enough to film their shenanigans. How could they? I took screenshots of their messages and sent them to my phone before lifting the toilet seat and dropping her phone inside. Fuck that bitch, I grumbled. Heat flushed through my body and suddenly all I could see was red. My back tensed as I bent over to splash some cold water on my hot eyes and cheeks. After shaking my hands in the sink, I stared at myself in the mirror. All I could see were the text messages staring back at me. My nostrils flared as I swung the door open and charged down the hallway to find her. My fists were balled so tight I felt my nails biting into my palms. The moment she looked at me, I froze. I tried to speak, but my voice had been muted by the sobs trapped inside my throat. Instead, I charged across that soft carpet and crashed into her. The mug of hot chocolate she was holding splattered across the rug as I wrapped my hands around her throat. I wanted that yellow hoe wearing turtlenecks till May. I drew back and landed a blow on her over plump lips and another to her honey brown nose, instantly spilling blood. I snapped back into the present, eyes burning from a haze of smoke. The longer I sat in my father's driveway, the more I began to see how toxic my relationship with Jackson was. For the past four and a half years, I'd made him my king 
but I never realized I'd placed him on a pedestal that was out of my reach. He was so high that he thought it was okay to disrespect me and disregard my feelings whenever he saw fit to scratch an itch. But if he felt he could continue to play me in my face with Brie and then spin the block, he was out of his rabbit ass mind. At the end of the day, my love was no match for the fuckboy mentality etched sketched in his brain. And as for Brie, there was no excuse for her. She'd always wanted whatever I had just to say she had it, not because she wanted it. The bitch never did learn how to share the spotlight. Growing up, it had always been my twin brother Quincy and me. After our parents divorced when we were 11, our father got remarried to Bree's mother and the two moved in when she was seven. It took me a while to look at her like a real sister, especially after having a twin bond with Quincy, but I did. I took that bitch under my wing. I loved her like she was blood and she thought it was okay to run behind my man. She ripped my heart out of my chest, but I wasn't going to roll over and die without a fight. Every time I laid eyes on her, it would be on and popping. I flipped down the visor to catch a glimpse of my sad reflection. My eyes were bloodshot red and puffy from the blunt and the constant crying. I was done longing for sympathy I knew I deserved but would never get from Jackson. I was also done valiantly hanging on to a played out fairy tale. I hit the blunt one last time before ashing it in the driveway and pulling off. All I wanted for Christmas was Santa to rid me of the shackles of Scorpio men. Oh, and revenge. <laughs>